Politicians like to tell us that the first role of government is to keep the people safe. So when disaster strikes, they have to deliver. Sounds straightforward, but it's not simple, and there are political traps aplenty. The insiders are here tonight on that. Jamie, Kathleen, and David all here at the table. But first, some reminders. Back, guys. Get back up, please. This was not one of Jean Chrétien's finest moments. What do you want me to do with it? Chrétien was about to call an election in the middle of the worst flooding Manitoba had seen in a century. Manitobans were not impressed. The city of Winnipeg was threatened, people were scared, and even Manitoba Liberals were aghast at the decision their leader made to call an election just hours after his visit to the front lines of the sandbag operation. Thank you for your work. That's not history's only example of bad timing and bad management, but it may be the most glaring. Prime ministers, premiers and mayors all know the pressure is on at times of peril. They have to be visible and in control, but they can't appear to be trying to take advantage of the situation. They have to be compassionate, but it has to be real. Anything else will quickly come off as phony. It's a delicate balance, and how you find it can determine political futures. I was uh, very much struck by the power of the devastation. The Premier has some remarks to make, and then we'll give you... As a relatively new Premier, Rachel Notley had little time to prepare for the most the dangerous, life-threatening fires in Alberta history. Cabinet today authorized the government to provide emergency financial assistance to... Her first challenge? Whether to immediately go to Fort McMurray or wait till the worst was over. How do you make those decisions? Time to get some answers. Okay, I, I, I want to get behind into the bigger picture of, of disaster management by politicians, but on Rachel Notley, what's been amazing in the last 24 hours is kind of universal praise for her from all sides of the political aisles. Deserving of that, David? Oh, I think absolutely, yes. I think that she has uh, provided the kind of empathetic but competent leadership uh, that people are looking for in this period. And she's presiding over what appears to be a highly efficient and well-prepared emergency uh, management system. Jamie? Yeah, I've got nothing to add. I think it's playing to uh, the Premier's strengths. I think people think she's a sensible, capable Premier, and uh, she's uh, demonstrating that right now. Can you handle that, Kathleen? <laughs> well, it's good to hear, and I happen to agree. But I think the interesting thing here is that when crisis happens, when actually when you elect a leader, whether it's a mayor, whether it's a premier or a prime minister, you do so based on the fact that you share values with them. And it's in a crisis like this that you actually get to evaluate them and evaluate their judgment calls. And I think that um, you, you, when you see them in action in moments like this, it's when you can really get a sense of, are, are they doing what you want them to do? Have I have given them my vote in good faith? And I think that that's been the response that people have been happy with. Yeah, with you're how. absolutely right. The, gauging how well a leader does has often not really happened until you see them handle their first mm -hmm. or try to handle their first crisis. Uh, let me break it down a little bit. One of the first decisions uh, any leader has to make in a situation like this is whether or not to go to the scene of the disaster. How do you handle that from the back? Well, well I think you, you back up a little bit. You know, Peter, in advertising, one of the most powerful terms is new and improved. And in politics, one of the most powerful terms is on your side. And that's the really what you're trying to demonstrate in the time, especially of a disaster or a crisis, is that the leader is on the people's side. And remember, it's not just the side of the people who've been affected in Alberta. The Red Cross has raised a record $60 million from Canadians. So Canadians are saying they're on the side of those folks and they want their leaders to be on that side too. So I think that that's one of the things you think about in how whether you go there directly whether you meet with leaders and so on the other practical thing you've got to consider especially now is uh, and especially for the prime minister prime minister is traveling now with a much larger security entourage than he ever has before you know where he is under a serious uh, threat from isil dash whoever however you want to turn them so it's not easy to move these folks uh around and they can often just get in the way. Yeah, he's going this Friday, Friday. Uh, Trudeau, but uh, and there have been some criticism it's taken too long, but that's one of the reasons I assume why. Uh, David, about going there, like what's the decision? Well, I think it, you don't want to go unless there's some utility to you going. You need to go. But the question is when, obviously, and I think that if you go uh, when uh, people are really busy actually dealing with the situation, then it's likely to look 
to look like an opportunistic photo op. You have to say, what's the purpose of me going? And if you go after, immediately after, then you can position yourself as the turnaround, right? You're the next stage of this story, which is what has to happen with Fort McMurray now. And I need to go see it, and I need to understand the devastation that's been wrought there. But if you'd gone earlier, it would have looked as if you were really just attempting to get yourself into a story. And you're probably likely, as Jamie said, to get blowback from people who are saying you're actually setting back the effort or inconveniencing the effort. Kathleen, what do you do when you go? Well, I think when you, when you go, the first thing is that, first of all, you, people expect you to go. There's no one in Alberta or in Canada who didn't expect the Premier to go or even the Prime Minister to go eventually. And why is that? Because we would expect our leaders who are going to make first uh, decisions about re-entry, about rebuilding, to have that kind of first-hand experience. But you have to do so by listening to the experts that are around you, right? So the, the, the civilian experts, the, the firefighters, the engineers, uh, the, the, the local residents. And I think that that's what's been really... Um, prudent about how she's approached this, that no one expects that Premier Notley is going to have all the answers, but she expects to have a circle of people around her that she can rely on. Peter, so, it's easy to get it wrong. And, and mm -hmm. if we think about George Bush and yeah. Katrina, um, he decided that to go there would be too disruptive, right? Especially to move the President of the United States. It's a Herculean undertaking. And it would have taken first responders away from the job that he was doing. So some smarty pants person and uh, advisor thought, well, here's what we'll do. We'll fly over it. He'll still be able to see the devastation. We won't disturb anybody who's actually doing work. Sounded like a great plan, but of course, he got creamed mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, the, in, the, in public opinion for being so cavalier as to, quote, fly over mm -hmm. the devastation when, you know, probably sound like a reasonable idea at the well, beginning. Well, when the but situation is like that, the, the, whether it was the Katrina or whether it's the fire or the floods in southern Alberta last mm -hmm. year or in Manitoba or the ice storm in Quebec, mm -hmm. these things aren't over in a day. They last a week. And yet the leader needs to be visible in some fashion. So aside from going there, what do you do? Well, the leader needs not only to be visible in some fashion, um, but they also have to run a province, right? And so they also have to have their hands still on the levers of power um, and making sure that the province economy is running as it is. So, for instance, Premier Notley this week, I had to send the Deputy Premier, Premier um, uh, MLA Hoffman, to the Western Premier's Conference so she could be there still in the province to make those key decisions. I think that, I think that you know, what was striking about the Kretchen example that you set off off the top of the show is this. It wasn't the problem that he went to do the sandbagging and they went to the flooding area. It was there was a lack of authenticity about it. Totally. Because one totally. day he's sitting there and he's, I'm with the people, I'm sandbagging. And the next day he's like, ah, forget about that. We're going to call an election. Let's get on with the show. And I think it was the sequencing of events in that example that you cited that was so problematic. And you have to be careful about that rollout. Well, I mean, I, I certainly think that that's uh, exactly correct, and that was also a problem that Bush had in Katrina, is these these uh, things show a little bit about the character of the leader and how much empathy and compassion they actually have. And if you look like it's just politics as usual for you, then you're going to be really, uh, you know, you're going to be judged pretty harshly about that. But you're right, most of the work that, say, a government can do isn't really on the ground in that, lo the leaders of a government can do isn't really on the ground in that location. But you have to look busy and you have to look concerned, um, even while you're managing a series of what are essentially bureaucratic processes to get work done, which is why one of the reasons you've seen everybody standing up and saying how much they're contributing and what their role is, because everybody wants to be seen to be doing something to fix it, even if your job isn't visible fixing it. So you've seen governments talking about, well, we've sent this many people or we're contributing mm -hmm. this much money. Uh, because these things are traumatic for the whole country. And that people expect their leaders to show broad leadership to the country. This Fort McMurray thing has not been an Alberta event. It's been a national event. Mm -hmm. All right. We've only got a minute left. but And I don't want to sound callous, but there, there, there are rewards to handling these things uh, correctly. I mean, uh, you know, Shachi Curl last week on that issue was saying, handled correctly, this can be a long-term bump for a political leader. Sure. Is that you, true? You, sure, for sure. If you look in uh, the American election, uh, when the hurricane came, they, Obama's performance versus Romney sealed the, in many people will say, sealed that election. Romney starts on a public policy argument that governments shouldn't be responsible for disaster relief. Obama becomes, as Karl Rove, the Republican strategist said, comforter in chief, right? And at that moment, when he ident when people identified with him and the fact that he was he, he was the guy that was the comforter in chief, sealed the election for him. So yes, you do get a bump for sure. Kathleen? Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that you may get a bump, but I think that I don't believe that people who go into public service, uh, you know, would do that, try to manipulate a situation for that gain. I mean, maybe there are some people, maybe I hang out with a very Pollyanna crowd, which I've mm. been accused of on this show before, but um, I think that people really in politics go into because they want to make people safe, as yeah, you I say. Agree, and, I agree yeah. with that, but mm -hmm. having said that, handled right, it can have an impact longer than, the, than many other issues can have an impact. It's true because, as David said, this is a very emotional issue for a lot of people, not just in the province, but across the country because of the nature of Fort McMurray and the industry there. All right. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for the insight, mm -hmm. the three of you, as always.